Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course, and this module is on common operational issues. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host through this module where we're going to go through the requirements in 220-601 and 220-602 exam, section 3.3 in both of those, where we need to identify tools, diagnostics, procedures, and troubleshooting techniques for operating systems. And we specifically need to recognize and resolve common operational issues. Today, we're going to learn about a number of operational problems. The blue screen of death is one that hopefully you haven't seen before, but we'll talk about what you can do when that occurs. We'll talk about system lockups, IO device problems, what we can do with application installation problems, and finally, when we get errors when we're starting or loading up Windows, what we can do. Now, the blue screen of death is a common issue and one that you're running to. Oh, no. Whoops. I've got my blue screen of death here. Actually, this is a simulation of exactly what you would see if you got a blue screen of death on your machine. Suddenly, you'd have this message pop up that says you've got some type of serious problem and Windows has been shut down to prevent any damage to your computer. It even tells you what it believes the file is that caused the problem. Usually, it's a system driver. It could be a something related to the kernel of your system. It gives you a description of what the problem was. And all of these things are going to be interesting whenever you start to do troubleshooting of this problem. They'll be very useful for you to have this available. All of this information is also written into the event log in your computer. So if these things happen to pop up and your system automatically restarts and you suddenly missed all of that, it's OK. It's all saved in your event log. You'll see this some stop command information down here, what the stop command actually was. This is hexadecimal code. You can see what memory addresses are for some pieces of the stop command. And then it gives you an explanation down here of the file that's having the problem and more information regarding what in memory and the date stamps associated with this file. Now, the blue screen of death is one that is very damaging when it happens because it completely stops your system and you must restart to get back to where you were. You really don't want this particular problem to happen. But fortunately, Windows can resolve this problem if you just go through a couple of different steps for troubleshooting. The first place you should go back is to your event log and find out what's in there. Was it a particular driver? It may be that we need to do a driver update. Was there a particular program running at the time? It's showing the executable of the program is causing that blue screen of death. We should probably go to the manufacturer support for that driver and make sure we have the latest pieces there. We can also search for that specific stop command, the hexadecimal codes that were involved, the file that was involved, or the name of the stop command that we got at the very beginning. And we could do some research of that as well. You can find a lot of this information just by Googling. I'm going to back up real quick and show you. So if you start Googling this particular file, you Google blue screen of death, you put in this page fault in non-paged area, you'll start to see instances pop up where other people have had this problem. And it might take you down a troubleshooting path where you can start narrowing down where these types of problems might be occurring. Occasionally, a blue screen of death will occur when you've had no new device drivers that have been loaded, no new piece of hardware, there have been no patches recently. But for some reason, nothing's changed with the software, and yet you're getting this blue screen of death. Occasionally, a blue screen of death might occur because of a hardware problem. So you might have bad memory. You might have something going wrong with the logic board or the motherboard of your system itself. You can't just rule out the hardware. So make sure that not only are you looking at what's been happening on the health of this machine with its operating system and with its drivers, but also don't rule out your hardware. Make sure you do some hardware diagnostics and make sure that your hardware is running the way that it should as well. What if you don't get a blue screen of death? What if the system just stops dead in its tracks? It is locked up, and you can't have anything else happen. Your mouse isn't moving. Usually, there's nothing written in your event log. It just completely grinds to a halt. And there's nothing else that you can see happening on your screen. Now, what you want to do is check for some activity. Make sure that it's not just your user interface that has stopped. Is the hard drive flashing? Is there activity going on there? That may be indicative that other processes, services, or things are still running in the back end. You just can't see them. Check your status lights. Hit, uh, hit the, the caps lock key and the num lock key on your keyboard and see if your keyboard registers a change in your operating system when you happen to click those. Try Control. I'll delete. See if you can make the task manager pop up and see what's going on in your system. You may be able to force it into a state. So just because your front end is locked up on your screen 
doesn't necessarily mean that your entire computer is locked up. And that may help you troubleshoot the process. You want to make sure that you've got the latest drivers, the latest software patches. Go through that normal troubleshooting process and see if this is something that has changed recently. See if there are new patches. See if there's new drivers that have been loaded, a new piece of hardware. Did somebody plug in a new USB device? And sometimes these small changes that may seem like it's nothing, may cause some of these bigger problems on your system. So you may want to try reverting to the way things were prior to any of these problems occurring. Lockups are very, very difficult to troubleshoot. So you want to be sure to step through the normal troubleshooting process you have and go back to when things were working normally and then work your way forward. One good way to go back to when you knew things were working normally is take advantage of your restore points. So in your Windows, use that restore point functionality to go back in time to a known configuration yesterday or a week ago or last month and take off all those additional drivers that were loaded during that time frame. Go back to a configuration where you weren't having these types of lockups. Now, if you're not getting a blue screen of death and your system isn't locking up, that doesn't mean that you still aren't having problems. You may find that you're having problems with single devices. Maybe you've plugged in a USB drive and you can't see the drive. Maybe you've tried to print to a printer and it says that it can't print out of that port on your system. Maybe your mouse isn't working. So there are some minor problems that may turn into major issues when you start trying to use your system. One place to go to whenever these start happening, a great place, is the device manager. You'll know immediately if there's some type of hardware problem or some type of driver problem where the hardware in your system is not talking to your Windows operating system. The device manager is a great place to go. You'll know immediately if there's a driver issue or device problem, if the problem is software related or hardware related. It's a good place to go. And there's your only two choices is really, is it a software problem or is it a hardware problem? You may recall from some of our previous videos, the way that you can start Device Manager is you can right mouse My Computer and click Manage. And one of the options that comes up is the Device Manager. And you get to the same screen from your Start menu under the Settings in your Control Panel. We can then click your System. And then underneath System, there is an option, a tab that comes up for your hardware. And finally, under the hardware is the Device Manager. You can see why having that quick view that we had before, that shortcut from the My Computer was so useful. But we get to the same place. We have this Device Manager here. And the first thing we want to see is if anything on the screen pops up with a problem. Device Manager, by default, has all of the categories collapsed that are running normally. If anything is running abnormally, you will see a category that is not collapsed anymore. It's expanded out. And underneath that, there will be an icon that shows there's a type of problem. So in the case of this one, this port is here. I do have a printer port on my system. But you can see this red mark means that there's a problem there. And if I right mouse click, I can look and see that it's disabled. If I look at the properties of this, we'll know immediately if that's the case. It says this device is disabled. So always go into the properties of the device, see what it tells you about the device and what problems it might be having. Well, if that's the only problem we're having, we can simply enable this device. And it says, are you sure you want to enable it? Absolutely. We'll click Next. And it says, yes, I was able to enable this device without a problem. Perhaps somebody went in and disabled it uh, because they were trying to troubleshoot another problem. Maybe they wanted to be sure that it wasn't used at another time. And we plugged in a printer, and we were expecting it to work. But of course, it wasn't going to work because we had administratively disabled that port. And by simply going to our Device Manager, we can now see the status of our hardware. And we know that every piece of hardware we recognize on the system is working the way we would expect. We can, of course, manually go in and expand out different pieces of this, select even the ones that are running fine, and look at the properties. And it will tell you if the device is indeed working properly. The Device Manager should be your first starting point for any of those types of problems with those I.O. devices or other components so you can really see what's going on. The installation program for most applications is written to so that it will recognize almost every scenario that might be a problem. You may notice if you try to start an application installation, one of the things that it tells you is make sure that you've closed all the applications that are now open on your system. The reason it does that is because if a program is in use or a file is in use, a separate program can't overwrite that file. So you must be sure that you close all the applications on your system that are 
are related to that program, a really good best practice is just to close all applications on your desktop because you never are quite certain just by looking at your desktop if that particular application is using a file that you need to then replace. You may also have to stop services. You may have to go into the service management of your system and turn off certain services so that it's then able to update the program that you're installing. You also want to check the versions of applications. All too often, I've had somebody who's using a 32-bit version of Windows try to install a 64-bit application or vice versa. If at all possible, you want to be sure that if you're running your 32-bit Windows XP that you are installing a 32-bit program that is compatible with Windows XP. If you're running a 64-bit version of Windows Vista, make sure that the application is either compatible or it is meant to run in a 64-bit version of Windows Vista. So it's very simple to categorize those and to make sure you've got them there. But it's very easy if you're on a manufacturer's website to click the wrong thing. So make sure if you're downloading new drivers or you're downloading a new application, make sure you choose the one appropriate for your operating system, whether it's your 32-bit Windows or your 64-bit version of Windows. Whenever you start your computer, there are a number of things that happen when Windows starts up. A lot of different programs start up all at the same time. And you may occasionally see startup errors occur with some of those. These usually happen right after you've logged in, you get to your desktop, and there might be a message that pops up. You may want to try a different username. Try logging into someone else if you happen to have another user on that machine. Or create a new user and try logging in as that user. If the problem doesn't follow the user, then you'll know the problem specific to something that was installed just for that first user. That helps your troubleshooting process a little bit. Now you can also see if this is something caused by Windows or the application itself. Look at the title bar of the error that pops up. Go to your event log. Your application's view of your event log might have some information there that can help you. And it will usually log when an application starts normally. It will also give you messages when an application is having problems. Sometimes you're just not quite certain. A message will pop up on the screen. There's nothing in the message that gives you any indication of where that came from. The title bar of the dialog may say error, and it may say error 01. And that's all the information that it ever gives you. Very poorly written application. But it's still something that you have to troubleshoot. So go back to your event log. See if you can start trying to figure out where that happened to occur and where that happens to pop up in your event log. And occasionally go to Google. Type in error and error 01 into Google. See if that gets you anywhere. See if you happen to maybe guess at the application where that's coming from. You can start doing some searches online that might take you down a road. Maybe someone else has seen this problem, and you can learn from something else that they've seen. I mentioned using the Event Viewer. And there's a lot of great information in the Event Viewer. The way that you get to the Event Viewer from the Start command, you can go to Settings in your Control Panel. Under your Administrative Tools is your Event Viewer. If I double click, it will bring up a list of the Event Viewer here. I can also very quickly get to the Event Viewer by right mouse clicking my computer and choose Manage. It's a great shortcut, isn't it? Because right in there is our Event Viewer, the same information in there. And if I use a little plus sign and expand out the Event Viewer, you can see the events are categorized into Application Events, Internet Explorer Events, Security Events, and System Events. So if you're having an application problem, you can click on your Application Viewer, and it will list out whenever you're having problems. Graphically, you can see whenever there is a warning that pops up. So I got one today at 2 o'clock and 28 seconds. I got something from my Symantec antivirus. And if I double click, it will pop up an event property screen that says, my Symantec Endpoint Protection AutoProtect failed to load. The application has encountered an error. So I got a problem with my event. And my event viewer shows me that I had a problem with my Symantec Endpoint Protection AutoProtect. This is a great example of when you have an application issue and one that goes by on the screen. This didn't even give me an error message on the screen. I just know now that there was a problem with it. And now I can start troubleshooting the problem. It even gives us a website to go to so we can start our troubleshooting process and try to figure out why we were getting the AutoProtect failing to load on our desktop. Uh, whether it's applications like this or any other application loading during startup, you can see that there are a lot of different sources, a lot of different programs that are beginning. And I've really got a way now to go back in time and see exactly what's been going on with all of those. So don't forget that that event viewer is there keeping track of what's going on. It can be a very powerful troubleshooting resource for you. 
Now you know how to go about troubleshooting some of the more common operational issues in Windows, whether it's something as dramatic as a blue screen of death or a lockup, or it's something that you can troubleshoot inside the Windows environment, such as I.O. device problems, installing applications, or even errors that you might get while Windows is starting up or loading. If you'd like to watch any of our other A-plus videos or participate in our message boards and a lot more, you visit our website, freeaplus.com.